see the darkness in our society. It only came because we had to The monster. We let the room get the But now, all we have to do is make a picture. Mock Swagger. I'm calling you out. Uh, just making a joke. Uh, this is Haas Bossman with Breadsheet. This podcast. My fake name is Haas Bossman. My guest's fake name is Christy Yamaguchi Man today on the inaugural episode of Breadsheet. I'm not going to do a long intro for this. I might do long intros sometimes if I want to, but I was up very late last night making theme music, doing the last edits on this only part one of a two part episode, interview, whatever you want to call it, with Mr. Crispy Meme Donut himself, the TDZ, a.k.a. King, Mr. Christy Yamaguchi Main. At Crispy Meme Donut, also known as Ass Warfare, his burner account. He is a daily zeitgeist stalwart. Uh, that's a podcast that we submit AKs to. He has submitted a billion of them. And if you don't know what I'm talking about... Well, whatever. He's a cool dude, and you should listen to this interview with him because he's pretty smart and chill and fun to talk to. Um, I was probably a little awkward. I was really hot sitting in a closet, and of course, you know, first episode, a little anxious, but I'm going to keep going with this. I hope you enjoy it. Subscribe, please like, and uh, leave a five-star review, even if you think this sucks. You know, just to be nice, leave a five-star review and say that it's really, really great because, you know, that'll help me out and you don't have to listen to it. You can just like subscribe and let it just keep downloading into your feed and that'll like put my numbers up and everybody wins, right? And you'll just have like a little extra space on your phone. That way we're cooperating. See, that's what this is all about. Somebody needs to make a bread sheet. That's a spreadsheet about bread. Now, let me explain. I'm not going to explain that right now. I'm just going to go ahead and go to the interview with Mr. Christy Yamaguchi Main. He is at Crispy Meme Donut. I am at Haas underscore Bossman. You might hear that uh, the quality of this sound is going to be different from the quality of the sound of my voice on uh, the recording, and that's because we had a bunch of technical difficulties, and I had to do a really weird thing that I'm not going to get into right now, but at some point, if you want me to explain it, I will, maybe on the next episode, but I'm just so tired. I was up super late, and now I'm supposed to be working. Technically, I think I'm committing time theft right now, uh, but I just wanted to get this episode up real quick. I figure, you know, this is like about the amount of time I would be on a, a smoke break or a bathroom break or something like that, so it's okay. Um, and plus, you know, all wage labor under capitalism is exploitation. So I think we're doing good. We're off to a great start. Opening up episode one of Breadsheet with some time theft, stealing from the capitalists. So, um, uh, yeah, the, we don't really get political in this first half. This is just the part one. Um, I, I, I realized when I was editing it that oh, this is my podcast and I can split it into two parts so this doesn't have to take two weeks. I can just release part one and then I'll uh, try to get the next part out uh, by the end of this weekend. So, yeah, this um, part one with Christy Yamaguchi Main, this is just like some behind, little peek behind the curtain, getting to know Mr. Crispy Meme Donut. He, uh, we just talked music and Wilmington and, you know, a few other things. Oh, I just had a, a ding. I wonder if that came through on the mic. Well, this is a good conversation. The second half, which I'll release, like I said, next week, that we go into more talking about the the protests, Black Lives Matter, this incredible historical moment. And that's you know probably going to be the more uh, the more substantive uh, half of the podcast. But this first half is very informative and very fun. It's it's uh, it's a it's a hang. You know, we're not professional comedians or public speakers or anything. We're just chilling, talking. Um, talking about stuff that we think matters, at least for the uh, the second half of the show and for the first half, just sort of shooting the shit. Sort of reminded me of in my musician days, like musicians were always, not always, but 
often really fun people to hang out with because they just have a lot of stories. You know, they travel a lot, they meet a lot of weird people, and a lot of them are really weird people. So this, uh, and Chris, Chris Yamaguchi Main is a musician, and he's kind of a weird guy, just like me, and just like probably most of the people listening to this. That's what unites us all. We're all kind of weirdos in our own way, right? So um, the point of this podcast is to fix society. I have a YouTube channel called Haas Bossman. Just go to youtube.com and search for Haas Bossman and look at my videos, subscribe, like, and all that stuff. And without any further ado, here is Mr. Christy Yamaguchi Main. I think mid sentence is where we start. <laughs> Man, the the more the more things uh, get simplified, the more difficult they end up being when something goes wrong. That's very true. That's like Apple products. I love them because they're so user friendly. But whenever you have to do something like just a little bit more complicated, there's like can't figure it out. The slightest thing out of pocket ends up being a pain in the ass. Yeah. All right, man. Well, since we've already um, exhausted twenty eight minutes. Um, <laughs> Dude, I am I am on no schedule, man. Like okay. you, yeah, I, I know, I know you just got off work, uh, but uh, yeah, if you want to redo the mm -hmm. intro and stuff and like go into whatever framework you want to do, then go for it, man. Take your time with this thing, dude. Okay, I I appreciate your patience and my yeah brand new endeavor. Yeah, um, of course, dude. You're mm -hmm. you're you're uh, flying by the seat of your pants on this shit. Dude. Absolutely, I. Uh, <laughs> You know, I used to uh, write for uh, Flagpole Magazine in Athens, uh -huh. and so I've done my share of interviews, but they were all, like, for... I would record them, but they were just for my use for, like, writing articles. Right. And, like, it would... Uh, I would... The way that I did it back then, this was, like, back in, like, almost 10 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I would record them... I would, like, open up GarageBand on my computer call google right. call the like pr person through google voice they would connect me to whoever i was interviewing and then i would record their voice coming out of my speakers into the microphone and garage band holy um, shit but it was just for me to transcribe so it didn't really have to sound good but right right but you sound really clear are you using that uh zoom mic yeah, I am. I'm using that uh, that IQ6. Uh, actually, DJ Daniel from Zeitgeist recommended it because I wanted something. I, I want to start interviewing my dad and start getting some of his stories uh, down. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted something that was decent quality that I could just take over there and set between him and I and uh, just start asking him questions and basically just get him talking because you don't need much of anything to kickstart that mouth of his. Mm -hmm. And uh, once he's going, man, his stories are never ending. So we've got plans to do that as soon as we feel like it's it's pretty safe to like be in close proximity for with each other. Oh yeah, that's a bummer that uh, I haven't been able. My parents only live like an hour and a half away from me, but mm -hmm. I haven't seen them since the since the pandemic began. Yeah, I feel you. But, well, yeah, do you do you want to do you want to do the intro or or whatever you've got in mind? I don't know how you wanted to start this thing. I know it's re obviously recording. You can chop all this stuff up, but however you want to intro it, we can we can do it, man. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll probably like record an intro. You can hear my voice is still kind of scratchy. Um, um, yeah, 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 I'll uh, I'll probably record a different like an intro later and talking. put, put gotcha. that in. Okay. But for now, let's just uh, go ahead and get started. Uh, okay. Welcome, Christy Yamaguchi Main, to the, I guess this is the inaugural episode of Breadsheet, as I think I might wind up calling it. I'll, uh, it's honestly, you know, it's a, I know it was a placeholder name, but it's not a bad name at all. It actually has kind of a, a meaning, which I'll uh, maybe tell you later when I, because I have a few stuff to kind of lead up to. The, I, I kind of want to end with just talking about like, what the fuck do you think I should do this podcast about? <laughs> right, gotcha, <laughs> you know, gotcha. Pick your brain a bit. Um. But, okay, so let's start with, uh, like I said earlier, um, since we're kind of, uh, it's mostly going to be Zeitgang, probably, maybe yeah. only Zeitgang listening to this, like, <laughs> right. the first episode anyway. Um, My mom yeah. might listen to this, and that might be the only person besides Zeitgang that gets it to try. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my friend um, Samuel will definitely listen to it because he <laughs> listens to he's the only friend I have who also listens to Daily Zeitgeist and nice. he's like not on social media really. So right. he'll probably be excited to just like hear Christy Yamaguchi Main's voice. 
Oh shit. <laughs> well, you, you'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll send him a, a signed like eight by 10 of something. Uh, oh. not my face, but I'll, I'll send him, uh, like a thanks for listening postcard or some shit. Hell yeah. I'm sure you'd really <laughs> appreciate that. Um, I will, uh, send you his address. Uh, yeah. so, um, but uh, the I thought, like I said, I thought it would be a cute way to start by um, what's what's something that's overrated. Let's rip off Daily Zeitgeist to get the ball rolling. So something that's overrated. I struggle with this one every time I listen to an episode of that because I like everything that I start to think is overrated. I start to justify why it's not like why it's like why there's a good reason people like the things that they do. But I will say overrated is having hair. Uh, And that's a personal one because I was like 21, 22 when I started going bald. But once I took the razor to this thing, once I, uh, as Bomani Jones famously says, once I came home, uh, as far as my hairline, uh, there was no turning back. And it is amazing. It feels incredible. I never have to worry about uh, going and getting haircuts. Like all the people during the pandemic that have talked about like, you know, can't wait to get back to the barber and all this stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. If I had a good head of hair, I would be singing a completely different tune, but I do not. So I'm going to lie and say that I don't miss it at all. Uh, but I think it's overrated having hair, like shaving your head or just keeping it close crop. Man, it feels amazing. You just, you, you know, razor it in the shower. You get like an electric razor and you buzz it every, every couple of days and you're good to go. So either having hair and my second one is dishwashers. Um, Dishwashers, having an electric dishwasher, uh, it, they're great. However, like if you just wash the pans that you just use to cook, like right after dinner, like you don't have to use that water bill, that electric bill goes down. Like you don't have to wait and like fill up, you know, you, your dishes start running low because you haven't used enough to like fill up the dishwasher to justify running a load and stuff. Like I feel like it was one of these appliances of modern convenience that was like a status symbol. And then it just became like a standard appliance to have, but like you get yourself a drying rack and you just like kind of keep up with a little bit. Like you don't need a dishwasher. Like I've got a way too expensive dishwasher in my kitchen and I like washing dishes. I like standing there and like scrubbing them and then setting them out to dry. And then like, I don't know, there's something kind of like therapeutic about it to me. So that's what I'll go with my underrated. Well, I mean, yeah, that, uh, having like washing dishes is kind of actually like when I used to, you know, have to work in restaurants and stuff, I would always try to be the one to wash dishes just because if you put in headphones, you got a podcast, a oh, audio yeah, book, absolutely. some music, yep. then like, I, I like doing stuff like that. Like, honestly, I've always thought that, especially since like just having a phone in your pocket and just being able to listen to anything all the time has become literally. Yep. Yep. Like I, you know, I used to, always like think man i never especially growing up on a farm and stuff like i never want to have to do manual labor for a living right but now it's like i mean if it paid well i wouldn't really mind doing manual labor just because i could just listen to stuff the whole time and yeah absolutely fly right by oh well that's I mean, that i mean that's uh that's essentially what my job is now uh, i detail cars uh, full-time at, at a dealership here in town and I absolutely love it. And there's something similar to like washing dishes, like that manual labor, that immediate satisfaction, that gratification you get from like completing a task and like seeing the difference from where you started to where you ended. And yeah, you're damn right. All day long. I spend with an earbud in my ear, listening to, um, daily zeitgeist or reply all or Dan Lebitard show or an audio book, or even just listening to YouTube videos, you know, like what we've learned over the past, like decade, two decades or whatever, like since podcasts started becoming a thing is that so much of the visuals that you need to tell a story are not necessary. Like the audio format, is is it, it's nice to have those visuals but that's two senses that you need to dedicate to consuming information if i can excuse me i had to burp for a second bless you if i can if i can complete a task uh by just dedicating one sense to it then hell yeah i'm gonna vacuum i'm gonna mow the grass i'm gonna do like everything i actually need to get done instead of having to dedicate my eyes to something so yeah, I, 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 I dig it. I, I know we just got off on a hell of a tangent there as far as uh, dishwashers being overrated, but uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. 
Oh, yeah, no, that's, I mean, tangents. Some of my favorite podcasts are the ones that have, like, super long tangents. You're like, what the fuck was this supposed to be about <laughs> exactly. again? So, I like, I, I, uh, I, I thrive on a, a lack of structure most of the time. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Right there with you. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, the, uh, so it was, uh, your, your overrateds were, um, dishwashers, which I think you gave some very compelling reasons for that. And I mean, the Thank thing you. that you said about, uh, the, about, you know, just washing your stuff after you use it, like I lived in a house that didn't have a dishwasher with like five other people back mm-hmm. in college mm-hmm. and we figured out very quickly that we needed, cause none of, you know, it was a bunch of guys, like 20 <laughs> yeah. year olds. Right. We realized that like. We had to come up with a system. So what we all did was each of us had one plate, one cup, like one of each utensil, just like one of everything that you need. Just like and, prison, you know, just, just yes. like prison <laughs> or like being a cowboy out on the Wild West or some shit. Like you got your tin plate and your your one spoon and your tin cup. And that's like that's all you used. Yep. Yeah. And I mean, it, it works well um, and you <laughs> don't wind up with like dishes piling up and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing, having a shaved head, I also had some, uh, or I guess overrated having hair, right? Yeah. Um, there you go. The, uh, yeah. When I was, uh, yeah, in my early twenties, I had long hair, like, you know, down to my nipples mm-hmm. and my, uh, a friend of mine kept telling me like, dude, you just got to shave it off. Just get rid of it. Like, <laughs> it'll feel so good to like, get rid of all your hair all at once. Like, right. That. Right. And he was so right about that. And ever since then, like every time it starts getting like barely a little bit hot, I always shave all my hair. Yeah, man. Feels incredible. I, I right before like before. So like I went like around the age of like 20, I started noticing my hair was receding and mm-hmm. all my grandfathers and uh, both my grandfathers and my dad had, you went bald real young. So I knew it was coming, but around 2021, 20, it went from like zero to 60. Like my hair said, fuck you, I'm out. And it was <laughs> gone. Hardcore. And so before that, though, right before that, I had grown my hair down past my shoulders. And I used to put it in pigtails. I used to put it in braids um, and had the big beard to go along with it. Um, and uh, that's how I just used to, that, that was the style. But then I, I was like, oh, my God, this shit is getting so thin on top. And then when I shaved it. When it it was just like it was it was uh, uh, Andy Dufresne at the end of Shawshank Redemption, like standing uh-huh. in the rain. It was the most <laughs> liberating feeling of like never having to be insecure about that again. Because I see, dude, look, no shade on anybody that's holding on to that last little bit of wisp, that that uh, you know, the dandelion fuzz laying on the top of their head. I get it, man. I get it. However, if you just come home, if you just own it you will feel more confident you will feel uh like you'll you'll never have to think about it again and i promise you your head is not as weirdly shaped as you are insecure about it you know it's not as bad as you think it is i promise yeah no i totally agree (laughs) i think i think all all guys should shave their head like before they you know might start going bald just so that they can like see that it doesn't fucking matter. It's yeah, not a exactly. Big deal, you know? Exactly. Hey, somehow yeah. I ended up with my wife who is uh, incredible with a completely bald head and a gigantic beard. And I still don't know how I did it, but uh, I am super thankful for it. Well, see, there you go, man. That's, and <laughs> I, I remember my sister telling me that she thinks uh, b- guys with like male pattern baldness look like distinguished. So, yeah, you know, <laughs> there's something, yeah, there's it. something in particular, like it, you got guys like, like your famous dudes that, that held on what is technically too long, like Jason Statham or Bruce Willis, like those dudes that that's, that's a, a style of male pattern baldness. I don't really fully grasp. It's like some secret of the universe, how you can have that little hair, but somehow look cooler than you've ever fucking looked. I don't really get that, but, and that's not the style that, uh, that, that I had, uh, unfortunately I may have rocked that a little longer, uh, than I, than I should have. If it actually, like, if I went bald in a pattern that was any kind of appealing, but I didn't. So I, I, I bicked the hell out of it. Well, Hell yeah, man. Um, I'm, uh, I, I love to hear that somebody's secure with, uh, with their, their looks. Absolutely. Um, own that shit. All right. So, uh, what's something that's underrated? 
Uh, underrated. So like my overrated was a little like, like actually specific. My underrated is going to be a little more abstract. Yeah. Um, the act of observation. Um, interesting. And what I mean by that is like just, uh, whether it's growing something from scratch, whether you have a garden, uh, I've got right now, I've got a garden going on. Um, and I've also got, I, I bought this like screen box, this mesh box where I have put caterpillars in and all sorts of bugs that like, uh, that form cocoons and stuff. Cause I want to see what they turn into and then I'll release them and stuff. And I, I kept my, uh, uh, I released some praying mantis not too long ago, uh, for my garden to like eat predators and stuff. And, whether it's growing something uh, legal or not illegal or whatever you want to do. Uh, but I've got like tomatoes and broccoli and all sorts of stuff. Like just the act of, uh, of observing like time passing. And that's like the most, that's like the most obvious example I can think of is just like, even if it's just a plant in the corner of your room, you know, or if you live in an apartment, like something on your deck, you can grow like little herbs and stuff like that it's the most rewarding thing and you don't have to do a whole lot when you're growing something, but you're the observation, the noticing that, Holy shit, this thing is three times taller than it was like a week ago. It like it's it time's going to pass regardless. You might as well observe something and like take pride in that time passing. If that makes sense. That is an abstract one, but that's a, a very cool one. I mean, um, the uh gardening that's something that i've i've never really gotten the appeal i mean you know i could always guess but sure uh, a couple of years ago like we were dog sitting for somebody and my girlfriend mm -hmm. was gone for the day mm -hmm. and some stuff that she had just planted the dogs like dug it up so i wanted to like oh, no. <laughs> her not to be like too disappointed when she got home so i like, went out and get, got replacement seeds and came back and you know spent the couple hours doing that and i was like i totally get why people like gardening now like, yeah 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 it's oh and, and it's another thing earth. it's another thing that you put you know you put a podcast in you put pop a little earbud in mm -hmm. and you you go out and and uh i positioned my garden to where like a week the house we we bought had some sprinkler systems already going in there and uh, i programmed it the sprinkler system just to hit the garden like twice a day and so i don't really have to do anything i go out in the morning and i check on my little my little praying mantises have like quadrupled in size now so they're like about two inches long and they started off about half an inch when they were born so like i'm watching them grow I'm watching the tomato plants grow, the broccoli, the onion, the spearmint, the peppers, like all sorts of cool shit. And uh, so I'm watching that. But also, like, I, I know this is still an observational thing, but mm -hmm. like observing a situation, like sitting back and like not feeling the need to comment on something, which I struggle with all the time, just <laughs> observing and absorbing uh, is also like part of this is like underrated is is you could also say just like knowing when to shut the fuck up uh but observing like a situation instead of you know screaming cannonball and jumping off the deep end uh is also part of it just you know uh if that makes sense does that make sense i feel like i'm like it's so abstract it might not even compute no, totally. Very, uh, very Zen. I'm sure there is like yeah, some yeah. kind of Buddhist something about that. For sure. Um, just being able to like absorb the moment. Um, did, right. right. You know, something that made me think of, did, did you guys get to see the, um, the eclipse a couple of years ago? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Did you see it like full totality? Well, not full totality. It mm -hmm. was, uh, it was, I want to say it was like, 80 percent or something like that or close maybe even more than that very uh cool experience either way i i up on my parents farm like where i live right now it didn't reach totality but it, you know just driving an hour and a half up north like we barely got like like a minute or so of it mm -hmm. and um that was i highly recommend it first of all like if you ever get a chance my girlfriend and i have actually been thinking about there's one um and coming up in somewhere in like Central America, it's going to mm -hmm. pass through in like 2024. So right. we're thinking about maybe planning a trip just like around that, you know, because I've always wanted to go to Central America anyway. But yeah, I've been excuse. to Costa Rica uh, twice. Um, yeah, two times now. And it's incredible. 
Absolutely um, incredible. Yeah, I would absolutely love to go there. I'd, I'd love to live in just a Spanish speaking country for a while, just to like yeah. improve my Spanish or sure. learn it at all. But that's uh, the eclipse. That was like kind of one observation, <clears throat> excuse me, that I had after the eclipse was uh, it was like, it's like you never really get to experience like time passing. Right. And that was what it felt like you were like, you know, fast forwarding the universe and like <laughs> getting to actually like observe something that hap like only kind of passively is always happening to you. Right. And that's another thing I've always kind of struggled to put into words, like what that sensation was like. Yeah. 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 I get it a little bit like you, you have these. So I'm, I'm a, I don't know how many lists I, if, People are listening to this. They probably have seen my Twitter or seen me tweet about stuff, but I'm a stepdad to three boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, my middle son is going into his senior year of high school. Um, and my youngest one is 14 now. And uh, I've been in their life for the past 10 years and observing like it's it's the so I, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole of like parent talk and shit because uh -huh. <laughs> it's boring as hell. But just the the observing them and observing them uh consuming the universe and 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 like basically you see these moments where they have thoughts that they've never had before and just those little markers of like man you just got introduced to a whole new concept and i don't i don't try to but i answer any questions they have and stuff but just like sitting back and observing them like kind of contemplate and kind of wrap their minds around something that they've never thought about before is like one of the coolest observational moments. And it's also, it's a, it's a, like a milestone. It's a signifier of time passing in another person's life. You know, I remember the moments that I had these first like far out thoughts about how the universe worked and how, you know, you know, just anything and everything. And to see that in a, a, a younger, smaller human is, is absolutely wild i love it yeah man i mean that's uh i definitely want to have kids someday um and uh that i i used to teach high school and actually want to start doing that again sometime soon as what well what subject but, um uh, english english cool yeah Hello. uh but i uh so yeah i that was always you know just the most and i've, I've worked with like i taught uh, esl in china mm -hmm. and taiwan and i've you know taught esl here and also like you know like english literature and like the you know normal high school teacher right. thing and um i have uh that's like always been the most rewarding thing that's something that you really get to see to observe in like teaching adolescents like english literature mm -hmm like getting to see them and like, you know, mixing in philosophy with it and stuff like that. Just like getting them to like grasp new concepts mm -hmm. and, you know, they find it at that age, a lot of them, you know, it's like very profound and you can kind of just see that on their faces. Right. So, absolutely. um, all right. So something from your search history that's revealing about who you are. Okay. Um, so search <laughs> this is a fun question. I love this. One. So, um, I, I actually like before I jumped on this call, um, I, I looked at my search history, um, <laughs> so I was writing an AKA today and I needed something to rhyme with the word chain. And I was trying okay. to find something Italian. Um, uh, I was writing an AKA for miles of gray and, uh, I was, it was to like a Jay-Z song and I was trying to rhyme something like I was looking up five grain Italian bread um uh just in a desperate attempt and i ended up abandoning it because i could not find any italian dish that had that sound in it um but that's that's pretty revealing about me because like i like these are like puzzles to me these are like like i get something stuck in my head and until i can get it out like until i can complete the puzzle the rhyme scheme the syllables the um, you know, the, I forget the technical names for all this stuff. You're an English teacher. What's the, what's, what's it called? Uh, uh, like the, a number of syllables in a verse or something. Does that, do you know the name for that? Um, that's, that would be like a scansion. Yeah, that's it. Is like, that's it. Well, it's called like when you yes. label those things. Scansion. But... So like, 
Yeah, like the the meter maybe I think right. is what it's called, and then scansion would be like the so, labeling. So like it, yeah. I am I, like I I genuinely look up like rhyme schemes and stuff that like that I'll put in a word from like whatever song I'm trying to parody, and I will like and I know this sounds like a lot of work, but it's really not. Is we're talking like a few minutes worth of like does this work out or not? But again, like. I don't do crossword puzzles. I don't do Sudoku. I don't do like any other, like, you know, brain teasers. These are like the brain teasers that I've come up for myself. Um, so that's one of the things, uh, five grain Italian bread, um, because I am, uh, okay. uh <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, obsessed with that. And then, uh, trying to get the rhyme schemes, right. Um, another thing is, uh, John Coltrane's hometown. um, I saw some post today. I don't even remember where I saw it, where somebody had painted a, a mural of John Coltrane um, in Hamlet, North Carolina. And I didn't realize he was from Hamlet, North Carolina. And that's where I'm that's where I'm born and raised in Wilmington, North Carolina. So I've been traveling Highway 74 and going through the town of Hamlet my entire life. And there's another town along 74 called Marshville. And they have famously always had a sign that says, welcome to Marshville, home of Randy Travis. And I've also passed through Hamlet, North Carolina, my entire life. Um, and I, they don't have a sign that says home of John Coltrane, one of the greatest American musicians of all time. And I like I was kind of perplexed by it. Like, why isn't this more well known? And I had to like see some like social media posts of this gigantic mural of John Coltrane, you know, uh, on the side of this building to know that this dude was from there. So um, search history being shame on you, Hamlet, for not having any kind of like sign along your highway saying John Coltrane is from here, by the way. Like, what are you doing? Get your shit together. Um, is that's ridiculous? Did you say Randy Travis is yeah, from so that same Marshville town? Marshville is like fifty miles away, and <laughs> it's like their most favorite okay. thing to display. Like, like they've had like uh you know presentations. They've given them like keys to the city and like and shit like that. And and obviously you can't can't do that with you know with, with Hamlet. But like have some kind of marker. Have something like John Coltrane is one of the greatest American musicians of all time like have something denoting that hey he was born here like you, you marshville right down the road is tickled shit that they have randy travis as a you know a home, a hometown guy like show some pride in john coltrane for god's sake you know yeah that is right that's, that's what i'm saying that, and that's that's, that's my that's my <laughs> that's why i got my ire up about it um and the only like and one other thing uh the thin white duke um, I think I was listening to Behind the Bastards the other week and Robert Evans mentioned something about David Bowie uh, supporting like some fascist politician in the, the 70s. And so I looked this up because I was curious, like what the what the hell he was talking about. And uh, uh, I think it was the episode with like Bridget Todd uh, was the guest. But I look, looked up the Thin White Duke and apparently like he said that, like, you know, obviously he was doing a hell of a lot of drugs back then and he blamed a lot of his comments and he said that it was right. part of the character of the thin white duke and then he moved from like california back to england to like get his shit together and like stop doing as many drugs and he he retired that kind of persona so i was hoping like when when evan said it i was hoping like hell i was like is that like genuinely how he felt or is that like you know was that like a character he was playing so uh, he allegedly says it was a character and yeah, David Bowie's got all sorts of other problematic shit in his history, but I was like, God damn, man. Like I, I thought, you know, just a few years later, he's, you know, uh, giving MTV shit for not playing black artists on their channel and stuff. I was like, what kind of like political swing did he get off of or get onto at, you know, different points in his career. So that's my search history. Those are the three things, like most recent things I've looked up. I was curious um, where you were, like, if you were from Wilmington, if you grew up there. But yep, I think yep, you born said and raised that. here in Wilmington in the, the Cape Fear area. Uh, just, I guess, technically it's outside of the city, city limits, but uh, the place I'm actually, like, the little township, it's not even a township, it's not an incorporated area. It's got a Wikipedia entry, so goddammit, it counts. But uh, Monkey Junction is right. the name of the place. 
Um, Monkey Junction is uh, just a little south of the Wilmington city limits. Um, we've got our own Walmart and we've got our own Home Depot and our own Lowe's. So it's might as well be uh, North North Myrtle Beach is what my dad called it whenever it started getting built up around here. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, Monkey Junction is the area. And that that uh, name actually comes from there used to be a service station between here and a, a little beach town called Carolina Beach, just across a place called Snow's Cut. And uh, a lot of these places are actually that show, you know, that show Outer Banks that people have been talking about. I've, I've heard of it. So what, it uh, Outer Banks is like that. this show on Netflix. It's like it's kind of like an updated uh, version of like Dawson's Creek, which was filmed here in Wilmington. Um, but like it's a yeah, bunch of ridiculously good looking kids and they they get in trouble. And, you know, there's mm-hmm. the right side of town and the wrong side of town. What's weird is those dudes are actually from Wilmington, but they they placed everything in the Outer Banks. But all the names for for places are actually uh, like places from around here. So like. The the heroes of the story live in a place called the Cut, which is a reference to Snow's Cut, which is like right where I'm I'm from, basically. Um, the rich kids are from a place called Figure Eight. I think it's Figure Eight in the the show, but that that is like a a real wealthy like island with with big homes on it. I think Michael Jordan's got a house on there because he's from Wilmington. Um, and then they they party a lot on Masonboro, which. I do too. <laughs> like it's like Masonboro is like uh, this like kind of barrier Island right off of uh, new Hanover County, Wilmington area. Um, so we, we, you know, get it, hop in the boat and go over there all the time. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm from born and raised. And anyway, back to the monkey junction that you can cut all that, all that shit out by the way, <laughs> but uh, back to the monkey <laughs> junction thing, there used to be a service station here between uh, like Wilmington city limits and snow's cut. And the guy had monkeys out in, I don't know the actual species if they were like capuchin or something like that. Um, but yeah, he used to keep monkeys out in like a tree out in front of the service station and people used to, you know, on their way to Carolina beach, they would stop. And that was kind of his like roadside attraction action so that that gave it the name monkey junction a lot of background (laughs) on an area that i thought i was somewhat familiar with but i mean i guess you know i haven't been there since i moved away from that area when i was like eight moving on i have this like i said i i very hastily assembled this uh list of this this bullet points here um skipping over a couple things but how uh, long have you had that giant beard (laughs) listeners may not be aware like if you don't uh if you don't follow chris yamaguchi man on twitter or you know haven't seen the i think you actually your picture is now your actual face uh no i you know what i think i switched it back to dale earnhardt uh the raise hell uh praise dale burn down applebee's logo (laughs) hell yeah it's kind of like it's it's I don't know that I've ever seen like a, a piece of art that kind of encompasses my immediate knee jerk uh, reaction to anything I quite like that little slogan. Yeah, I don't I I obviously, you know, we've never met in person or anything, but I somehow it when I first saw that I was like, this I think just fit Christian <laughs> Gucci name. So how long have you had that so, giant um, beard? So I, uh, my first job uh, I ever had was working for a grocery store called Win dixie um, And uh, okay. they, I'm trying to think the year, I think it was like October of 2004 is when they filed for bankruptcy and they closed down most of their stores. I think there's still some down in Florida, but that was the last time I shaved um was 2004 so i guess that's we're we're in this october will be 16 years since the last time i've taken like a a razor to my face and been clean shaven um so about 16 years now and i I trim it every once in a while you know you got to keep it healthy you got to get the split ends off of there and like when you're you know the little breaks in your hair and stuff so i i trim it i take care of it i shampoo it i condition it you know right trying to be a a a slob about it or anything Uh, make sure I don't leave food in it or anything like that. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's how long I've had it. Um, uh, people are, sh- I think the most shocking thing people uh, hear about it is that my wife has never seen my face clean shaven before. And like, so for some reason, people like they get hung up on that fact. Sometimes um, it is like, they just can't believe that like, she's never seen my chin or my jawline, which I have a pretty prominent chin. Like I, like I have, like I have a good jawline or whatever, but honestly, like when I, 
uh, uh, I knew the, the fix was in as far as the hair on top of my head. So I just went ahead and started growing my beard out whenever that, uh, grocery store closed down. And I have navigated the world since then. You know, a lot of people think you can't get hired or you ain't trustworthy or, you know, either you, you're going to end up, you know, uh, uh, just beating people up at bars and shit uh, the rest of your life if you got a beard this big. But honestly, like I was growing this thing before the whole trend, uh, it, it, before it came trendy to like have a beard or, or you know, for beard clubs and, and all that, that shit like that. I've, I've had it before then and I'll have it afterwards um, unless I get a wild hair up my ass and decide to shave it one night, um, which I don't foresee happening, but it could. Well, you're a, uh, a, a, a braver man than I. I at least have like a higher tolerance for discomfort. I mean, I guess you get used to it oh, after man, I, a while, I, but I don't even know started... it's, it's there. It's not itchy in any way. It's it's softer than most people's hair. You know, like it's 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 actually it's it's a. Uh, <laughs> more people like my beard than they actually like me. So at this point I would be really fucking myself over if I shaved it. It's like it's exactly, part of your brand. Exactly. It is point. definitely. And yeah. uh, just a, a, a side note, I do. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a, a, I detail cars for a living, but I'm also a wedding officiant. Mm -hmm. um, so I do 30 to 40 weddings a year. Um, and honestly, like the beard is, gets me more weddings than anything else um and by the way i don't know if, if you said gigantic beard it's about i'd say it's about 13 14 inches long maybe like it's definitely a foot at least yeah that's that's a yeah, big beard in, in my book it is um and it's hit terminal length it doesn't really get longer than this so i'll never catch up to billy gibbons or uh any of those dudes you see in like the guinness world record book and shit but uh yeah. So the, the wedding officiant thing, I stick out like a sore thumb when people are like browsing online profiles of people's, you know, of, of wedding officiants. So uh, like they, you know, when I meet with these couples and stuff and find out what they're looking for as far as a ceremony, um, I, I always ask them like, so if you don't mind me asking, like, what, what did you just Google me or did you find me on some like wedding venue site? And when they say that they saw a picture of me, they always like, their response is inevitably well i hope i hope you don't mind but like we we saw the beard and we we thought you looked you know kind of cool compared to the other you know bob barker like officiants you know the old old white haired dudes <laughs> that are are uh you know uh kind of look like pastors um because I, I again i stick out like a sore thumb but like it's been a part of my branding and it also works as like a filter for people. If, if a couple is like looking to get married and they are uh, cool with my appearance, then like they're, they're, 99% of the time going to be cool about everything else. I'm not going to have to deal with bridezillas. I'm not going to have to deal with bad attitudes. Like they are low key. They are easygoing. They are, you know, well, you know, everything you could hope for as far as doing business. Oh, dude. Yeah. It sounds like you've, uh, you got a pretty good mm -hmm. system worked out there. Absolutely. There. Yeah. And that's like foolproof. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. I got through the beard. Um, Oh, music. What's what's your story with uh, music? So, um, let's see. How did I? So, I think I started playing guitar when I was thirteen, um, and I I started and I I tell one of the guys that was in in my wedding, uh, one of my good friends, Frankie. Uh, he got an acoustic guitar and I thought if that idiot can play this thing, I can play this thing too. So, uh, and I've, I've told him that many times. And so I, I'm the one that stuck with it though. He, he, I don't think he plays very much anymore. Um, he may, maybe strum, but like I, I told my dad, I wanted for my, my 13th or 14th birthday, I wanted to get an acoustic guitar. So he's a, he's a bluegrass picker. He plays dulcimer actually, um, like lap dulcimer. Oh, so, uh, nice. like I grew up with gigantic parties at my house um with uh, he was in the film business for about 35 40 years and the crew that he used to work with all the time everybody played like a different instrument so we'd have banjo pickers and upright bass and guitar players and he'd be on you know dulcimer and mandolin pickers and stuff so i grew up around live music just in the house all the time um, and so he, uh, went out and he found the best sounding guitar he could find, um, that wasn't an arm and a leg. And so I, I stuck with it. I still got, it's still my acoustic guitar that I play to this day. Um, and, uh, so yeah, it just, 
it just kept snowballing from there. I just kept playing and kept playing. And, you know, uh, eventually, um, because guitar players are kind of a dime a dozen, um, in a lot of towns, I started playing bass, um, for a, uh, a band called Rapture Cabaret, which, uh, was like a kind of like a, uh, an at the gates kind of metal, um, band, uh, breakdowns and all that good shit. And, uh, yeah, you oh, can, yeah. You, I think that album is streaming still. Um, I think it got put up, but, uh, we, we did one album and put that out. And then, uh, I played in another band called, uh, uh, Beard of Antlers, uh, played bass and did vocals in that one. Um, and that's more of like a stoner doom kind of like super ungodly heavy, uh, uh, band inspired by bands like uh, Sleep and Sabbath and, and things like that. Um, and then the current band I'm in uh, uh, is a band called Bandolero, um, uh, which is uh, Spanish for bandit. And uh, we just like the, the sound of it and kind of rolled off the tongue a little bit. Uh, but it's kind of like... A, um, Honestly, like I don't like to over classify rock and roll. Like if it's if it's rock and roll, it's rock and roll, you know. And and it's kind of like we've heard, we've had people say it's it sounds like a mix between like Queens of the Stone Age and ZZ Top, um, which uh, I will gladly take both of those as compliments. Um, if if we come anywhere close to that, and we cover a lot of ZZ Top songs just because it's in the wheelhouse, and we we love Top as a band, so. Um, and you have the look. Yeah, exactly. So. And actually, this past Halloween, right, yeah. um, we did a Halloween show at a local bar here called Reggie's 42nd Street Tavern. And they do a huge Halloween show every year where they get local bands to learn an entire cover set and dress up as the band and kind of in character, like perform for the Halloween show. So we did ZZ Top and Perfect. I ordered like a this fancy ass jacket and a hat and the shades and everything. And we all were kind of like different versions of our, our, you know, counterparts. Um, and my birth name is Willie W I L L I E. So I was Willie F Gibbons for Halloween. And, uh, and I was, I told the crowd I was Billy's cousin. His throat was hurting a little bit. So I was going to do vocals and play rhythm and sit in with the band and shit. So, uh, man, I, I leaned into it because there's nothing I hate worse than somebody half-assing a performance of something. So I, I leaned into it as hard as I could and they absolutely loved it. We, we, it was like probably fun. the funnest show I mean, I've ever played. Yeah, leaning into it. That's and half that assing awesome, something, man. especially if you're performing, yeah. like it's it, it makes it less fun for oh, it's, everyone it's involved. Like, like I feel for someone who like can't commit to a performance in some way, like whether it be like uh comedy or music or theater or something, like if I get the sense that they don't want to be on mm -hmm. stage, I like want to crawl into a hole and die on their behalf. Like it's so it's so <sighs> cringy to me and and so I can't if I get on stage, I, I go full bore. Like I, I can't, I can't do anything half-assed when it comes. Just getting up there and just ex every bit of energy, energy that we had, like not leaving anything right. left over by the time. The Absolutely. Set was done, right? Absolutely. Like my, my favorite thing is to be exhausted uh, after a show because I have, uh, you know, shown my ass and. Okay. Well, that does it for this episode. Once again, he is Christy Yamaguchi Main. That's at Crispy Meme Donut on Twitter. Uh, I am Haas Bossman. That's Haas underscore Bossman on Twitter. And on YouTube, just search for Haas Bossman. You'll find me there, my channel. I'm launching a couple of new channels soon, within probably the next couple weeks. Um, at least one of them within the next couple weeks. Over the next month, um, I have just a bunch of ideas for stuff that I'm going to take when some stuff from back when I was an English teacher and sort of reformat it, uh, some of my lesson plans and stuff about critical thinking and stuff that I just thought was really fun and kind of try to do something with it for YouTube and make some videos out of it. I think that'll be pretty cool and just be a way to kind of sort of use my degree. Um, <clears throat> well... I love you guys, and I thank you so much, and please tune in next week for part two of the Christy Yamaguchi Main interview, The Seminal Moment in American History.
Oh, and the song we're riding out on, uh, I don't remember which one I chose. I liked a lot of the songs. This is Christy Amiguchi Main's band, Bandoleros. Check them out on Bandcamp. Uh, this is a full song. It's not copyrighted, so I'm just going to play the whole thing as we ride out here. Check them out on Bandcamp, Bandolero. Uh, so here's this song. I can't remember which one I picked, but I did download one last night. And I'm going to shut up now. Everybody, have a wonderful weekend. I will hopefully be in your ear orifices soon. It's a bridge. Save my